Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, whether you're joining me live or catching the replay. If anybody is still hanging in there and <laughs> hanging out with me, I sure appreciate it. Good to have everybody. I just realized this morning that I forgot to do the reminder for this. <laughs> Oops. A little bit preoccupied. I I'm an assistant scuba instructor, and my full instructor test to become a full instructor, not just assistant instructor, is June 6th, which is actually my birthday, <laughs> but that's when the examiner can do it. So I've been spending a lot of time getting uh, my skills down right so that I will be ready for my scuba instructor exam. So I've been busy with that. Hello everyone, great to have you with me today. Tell me how things are. How is life? Hi, okay, Ivy is here. So Ivy is one of, is the owner of Scrap Addicts. Scrap Addicts is our store spotlight for today. Scrap Addicts is in Edmonton, Canada. I've taught there a couple of times. They've hosted a back-to-back -back, and they're a full service awesome scrapbook store. So Ivy, make sure you drop your links, um, what you have in stock, your shipping policies and all that good stuff. It's always fun to go hang out with Ivy and Cory Lynn um, of the Scrap Addicts. Awesome, awesome little shop. It's really a great shop in Edmonton. Kathy, you took your instructor exam last year. Yeah, mine, my assistant, I mean, I'm assistant instructor, but um, Caroline, my birthday is June 6th. And that's the day, on that day is when uh, the examiner can come up and do my full instructor exam for scuba. And here's, here's a sad story. Are you ready for a sad story? <clears throat> I was getting in the pool at the scuba shop yesterday and I, I have a prescription scuba mask. And the ma because of my prescription, I have, it, my, my prescription scuba mask was, it cost me about $380 to get, and that's not for the mask itself, that was to get um, lenses, prescription lenses um, bonded to the mask so that I can see under the water. There's something really important under the water called your gauge. <laughs> So you can uh, see how much air you have because you know air is what keeps you alive. So it's nice to be able to see your gauge. Anyway, so long story short, I was just getting in the pool and I was bending down and I managed to catch the edge of that mask with my rear end and I broke it. I shattered it completely. So a, a scuba mask is made out of safety glass the same um, glass that's like in your windshield. So I shattered it. And the company that makes them is, is in California, which has so many restrictions. And anyway, so uh, somehow I've got to get myself so that I can see during my scuba exam. It's so depressing, you guys. I mean, it, it, that is, that's a first world problem right there. First world problem that in the long run doesn't matter when people are jobless and sick and it, it yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter in the long run. It's an inconvenience, right? So always counting blessings, always counting blessings. But I seriously was like, really? Just, it's just a bummer. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just a bummer. But so there are so many worse things in life. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, it's not like it's easy to break. It's, I just must have caught it just right. So by my big fat rear end. Hi, everyone. So welcome, welcome. Glad to have you here. So Yvonne, I, I, I have progressives. So Yvonne asked if I can wear contacts. I even thought about that. I thought, I wonder if I can get into my doctor. <laughs> and get contacts today. But I, I've never worn them, number one. And I sat on it, basically, Barbara. So I sat on that corner of it. Um, 
And with progressives, context can be difficult. So you kind of have to have one, like distance in one and then close up in the other. And it's, there's a long adjustment period. Um, the mask is not insured, no. Um, all right, so Scrap Addicts, she post, uh, Ivy posted her link, so make sure you check them out. Um, they ship worldwide within Canada, free shipping for orders over $50, very reasonable shipping outside Canada. And she did drop her link in the comments um, of all the Dina stuff that she has in stock. I get a lot of questions about... Um, about you know where do I find a specific stencil, and that those are really hard for me to answer. All the way from Saudi Arabia, hello Anissa. Um, they're 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 really hard, and it's because I don't know which stores have what in stock. So, um, yeah, so I'll do my best, but usually I ask you where you are. And or where you live, and then I'll kind of refer you to the closest store. Um, most most independents out there are happy happily shipping to all of you. And so, if you're in Canada today, check out um, check out Scrap Addicts. So so great to have Scrap Addicts with us today. Um, there was another question. Uh, how are you finding your CPAP? You know what, Laura? I am still adjusted to that thing. Adjusting. Kathy. So Kathy Shepard, who just popped on, um, was the owner of the Creative Quest. And then later, the the uh, uh, occasional artists were, I was just, I considered my home store. So Ivy says she can order anything. And... So if she doesn't have it, give give the store a chance to get it for you to order. Um, that's a good idea. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just catching up comments with lots of different topics. Okay. Um, there was another comment that I missed. Um, I'm glad you appreciate the layering video. I hope it made sense. So today I decided to talk about fine line tips, which I haven't talked about in ages. And, and to be fair, I haven't really even used them in ages, but I was, I love them <laughs> and they're still available. So people don't realize they're still available. And Patty from Ranger, she's the education director from Ranger. She had just done a demo with them and she said, hey, I want to Skype with you for a few things that you might not know about. And I'm like, sure. And she did tell me some things that I that I did not know about these tips. So I will pass that on to you. And what's fun is um, you can, I, when, when they first came out, I would tell everybody, oh, the, the tips make your, pen, your, your paints like a pen. And I should never have said that. <laughs> um, oh, and Avi just dropped their link about where you, on her store to order these tips. So I should have never said it's like a pen because, um, you know, a pen is easy to write with and sometimes the tips are not easy to write with because whether you have the tips on a tube or on the, the bottles, you do have to apply some pressure. So let me explain the difference. So Raina just asked, are the, t are the pink is the same as the black? They sort of, but no. So the black tips are the original ones that came out and these black tips fit on the tubes, only the tubes. That's it. Okay. So only the black ones that are in fact, these are still available. So if you do have tubes, you can, um, still get these. Their Ranger still, still has them and they, they fit on the old tubes of paint. And so how you would put the, the tip on the tube is you need to take the black lid off the tube. That lid, you save one for, for making small circles because, you know, it's a great little texture tool there. And then you screw the new tip on. And then this is your new lid forever and ever. Amen. Okay. And because I, I just don't want to take it off because then you're going to deal with paint drying inside and it, it just might cause you a few problems. But you screw that on there nice and tight and you unscrew the lid and you've got a fine line tip. So the fine line tip applicator is a lovely little American company. You might have seen their empty bottles. You can get empty bottles with needle tips on them. Um, those are super fun to play with. And I just, they were one of the first things that I, that I, that I kind of requested to, um, when I got my own line. And so the fine line tip app applicator people are the, are the, that's the company that makes the tips for us as well. So the why a tip? Because then you can squeeze your paint or medium 
through that needle and then so instead of having a big blob of paint you can have little bits right and it does take a little bit of strength I always say with the tubes it, it as the tubes are getting empty you can always like roll the roll the tube down, tube down just like you would a pastry bag and so that's what you need to think of it like I want you to think of it like a pen and not, or excuse me, I, I want you not to think of it like a pen and think of it more like a pastry bag. And, because you do have to apply some pressure to get the medium through that fine needle, um, especially because my paints are heavy body. And for a while I had one of these black tips on every color tube of paint. And then what I realized was the ones that I use the absolute most are the metallics. And I don't even have any more tubes left in my studio, so I had to put that black tip on a tube of gesso. But you, the, the key to this, the key to using these is that you want to, let me find something. You want to touch the tip to your substrate. So don't hold it up. Let me just move that out of the way. I'm trying to find something that'll show up on. This might work. So don't hold the, the, the tip when you're when you're applying the paint from the tip. Don't hold it up and like let it blop down like a worm, like this. See that? It, it's absolutely impossible to control. What you wanna do is touch the tip to the paper and then squeeze. And you might have to shake your paint tube or your bottle. Shank the, shank. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, I have that morning disease again. Shake the, the, the paint down towards the tube, the bottom of the tube and down towards the tip, and then squeeze with your tip resting on your substrate. So you're, dra you're squeezing and dragging it at the same time. So on your paper, on your canvas, whatever, your tip is making contact with it and you're moving your hand to do polka dots. Oh, just tell Diane I did a polka dot. Circles, drawing, doodling. And what's great about the tip is because my paint's heavy body, it's gonna come out and it's gonna have a, a relief to it. It's gonna be bumpy. It's not gonna completely flatten out because of the heavy body nature of my paint. And then when you let it dry, you've got this great dimensional um, effect. So really, I want you to think of it like grown up puff paint. <laughs> You know, remember puff paint when you were a kid and you would like put it everywhere, put it on all your notebooks and stuff like that. And so it's, I don't know, the relief probably isn't really showing up in the video, but it's putting on the paint with this nice little bump. Now, the dealio is that now that paint's on there really thick, so it's going to take some time to dry. So like in a class situation, I would always tell people, you know, do that right before you leave or buy one and wait till, wait to do that till you go home because you know you can't shut your journal or or you know stack your projects until that's dry but it will dry perfectly raised like that my paint will hold its heavy body and it will dry and how i use them for mostly is for top texture so that means when i say top texture that's dina's way of saying those very very top layers that that you add to give visual interest to you know, art marks to point you towards a focal point or just because you still feel like making cool little marks on your piece. These are so great because it's a, it's a dimensional mark, okay? There's no difference between the paint in the tube and the paint in the bottle. It's the same thing, just a repackage. Like Diane's paint recently got repackaged. This was my repackage. Um, so if you've got the tube paint, use it up. Notice that Ranger would always let me have the paints that got mislabeled. So if, if the labels were on Crooked, they would let me use them for class. So that's why a lot of my paint tubes, the labels are on Wonky. And this is a really old tube because we started with these small tubes and then later um, moved to longer tubes. So that's interesting. Now, care and feeding of your fine line tip, okay? Care and feeding is when you take the lid off this fine line tip, you should see two needles. You're gonna see a needle on your left and you should see a needle in the lid on your right. And when you put the lid back on, you're gonna thread the two needles together. The, the lid needle must thread down into the tube needle and then that, that ensures that it doesn't dry out. If for some reason it does dry out a little bit, all you have to do is stick a pin in there and then you're good to go again. So the, this is 
these are just a fun addition. And and so once you have this on your your paint, then you're like, oh, but what if I need a lot out? Well, I always, if I need a lot out, I take the entire thing off. <laughs> I put paint over on my palette and then I screw the whole thing back on is how I do it. Um, or you could just squeeze it out from the, t from the, from the tip. Now, when the, when the paints were redesigned, um, that meant the black tips no longer fit on this bottle. And that, you know, for, for a while I was like, dang it, I really, you know, I use the fine line tips and I, I really like them. I mean, look at that dimensional metallic on top of that pour. I mean, isn't that cool? In fact, I'll tell you that when people page through my journals, often they'll come to something I've used a fine line tip on and they'll be like, how did you do that? And it's just so simple, right? Because all you did was make marks on your substrate through the needle, right? So Ranger said that we could do a tip for the bottle. And, and for a while they were like, well, do you really need a tip for the bottle? Because the bottles have a little plastic tip right? That, that prevents too much air getting in that bottle and, and prevents stuff from um, drying out really, really severely. And can you use the tip of the bottle as a fine line tip? Well, you, you really can. How? However, that is very thick. And so you will find that the paint comes out of the tip that comes on the bottle. It'll come out really, really thick. Oh, and, and which you might want, or it just might be way, way, way too thick. So that's going to be a decision that you have to make. Now, if you want your, if you want a, a true fine line tip on these bottles, that's when these pink ones come into play. Okay, so these pink ones they fit exactly on the this bottle, and then they also Patty told me this is something I didn't know. These are the little bottles for pouring. So if you get into pouring, or if you go watch my pouring video, you can. Um, I talk about these and you can fill them up with whatever you want. It's really nice for pouring medium when you want a more precise application of pouring medium. But if you even want a more precise than this little nozzle is going to give you, these tips fit on these bottles. And Patty told me that and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Because then you could have um, a really precise, interesting you know, way to make marks in your pores. Um, or you could fill these little bottles with with any kind of paint that's a little more fluid. I mean, you could water down my heavy body paint a little bit and just, you know, apply it with these these fatter bottles. So I, I didn't know that. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. So they'll fit on there. So when you, when you put, and they also fit on some glue bottles, I think. I can't, I know Wendy uses them on a couple different bottles, so you'll have to check with her. But when you want to put this pink tip on one of your bottles, you, you do need to remove the, the little nozzle that, that comes with the bottle. Okay, and I only have, this is the only pink tip I have in my entire studio. I just ordered some more. <laughs> so when I, so let's say I want to put the pink tip on this marine. Um, what I do is I just rock the little nozzle back and forth, or I don't, or I don't. I had it out earlier. My hand's too slippery, so <laughs> I had to grab something to grip with. So you pop this out, and then you can save it to make little circles, but you just don't need this anymore. This little doodad. The original nozzle to the to the bottle, so you don't need it. Um, though, like I said, it's a great texture tool, so you might want to save a couple. <laughs> and so then, when you put, so pretend like I just did that to this pen, this uh, penny oops, that I just got in the paint. Of course, I did, Dina. Um, so then, this is now the new lid. So if I want a lot of penny out, I can either squeeze it through the needle or I can take the entire lid off and put some on my palette and put the entire thing back on. Now, I would always tell people, don't bother washing these. Um, there's lots of little pieces. You might not be able to get it back correctly. It's just such a pain. So I, I don't wash these tips ever. They become the new lid. And you know, once when your paint is too is gone, when you're when the bottle's too low to have any squeeze any squeeze out, you can put this on a different bottle and even a new color. And I'm going to switch the color in a minute, so I'll show you what I mean. 
the, the, the fine line tip that is the pink version is thinner, is more fine than the, the black version. So this, the black version has a wider needle to squeeze the medium through. And the pink has a skinnier needle to squeeze the medium through. Now, that might mean it's a little tougher to get the, the paint from the bottle through the skinnier um, needle. And so it might take, it, you know, to be fair, it might take a little bit of hand power. You're gonna shake it down, shake the medium to paint down um, towards the needle tip, and then you're gonna gently squeeze, touching the needle to your substrate. And because my paint's heavy body, it will hold the peak. So I just put heart, uh, little dots on that heart. See, and if, I don't know if it's showing up in the video, but they look like Hershey's Kisses. <laughs> they look like little Hershey's Kisses because of the dimensionality. I made that word up, dimensionality. Uh, because of the dimension, the dimensional properties of my paint, right? Because it has that, it has a heavy body, okay? So if you want that to be rounded and not a Hershey's Kiss, you flick the bottom. Oh, Dina flicked it a little too much there. You flick the bottom and it will actually flatten out your dots or it'll make them look like weird blobs. Obviously I flicked it. It's hard to flick the little one, but see how I flattened the peak out and then it may, it looks a little more like an enamel dot and then it'll dry dimensional just like that. So, you know, how long it takes to dry depends on how much paint you used and where you live. Okay. Um, so let's add some of this metallic to a few pieces. My favorite way to use this is I love acemic writing and I did a whole video on acemic writing, um, already you're welcome to please go back and read that. But again, my tip of the needle is dragging and touching right across that substrate. And you have to squeeze, you have to have a, you have to have squeeze um, consistently. You have to put even pressure on the bottle as you write to, to get it to uh, come out. And then don't, and you, you want to move, try, try moving your hand slowly and then try moving your hand really quickly. Uh, if you move your hand really quickly while you use this, you're going to get some skips. Just depends on how even you're applying the pressure. If you remove your hand slower, you're going to have a fat, you're going to have a fatter bead. So let me grab one of these. So for example, so here, if I go really quick, I'm going to have a really, th you know, thin line that skips, thin line that skips. Now, if I go really, really slow, you're going to get a slug of a line. And, be, it, it, and you know, look, you, you can do probably, if you're a cake decorator, which I so am not, but you can actually probably do some of your cake decorating things using the paint instead of the frosting. Okay, so moving it slow, I got a giant bead there. And, it, and you know, the only thing you have to do now is let it dry. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's quite a bit of drying time, right? That is quite a bit of drying time. Drying time. Um, but if you apply a more um, sort of not too fast, not too slow, like Goldilocks, right? Um, then you'll get kind of a medium bead. And so there is a learning curve. Um, yep, you you definitely. Uh, I'm going to demo on the gel plate in just one second. But either way, you you do you can get some cool effects, um, and there's just something special about the tips on the metallics. So if you think, okay, I don't want to invest in a tip for every paint bottle, I, I don't know if I would either. But I the, what I like the best on is metallic, and then my second favorite is white and black, because sometimes you just want a little pop of white or a little pop of black, and I just find it interesting that metallics and then the neutrals are my absolute favorite and I will sell I will tell you too I'm um, having a tip on red <laughs> can be really handy because sometimes that little pop of red near a focal point 
is really, really helpful. So maybe black, white, red, and metallics to start with and then see how much you use them. Now here's, here's something else Patty told me. One of the things that I would always warn people about is, it, and it was really confusing when it comes to the black tips, it's easier with the pink ones because there's these, these are a different color. But the way that these are made, they're made, all the pieces parts are made separately and then they're assembled. So let me find my tube of gesso with the tip on it. What did I do with it? Yeah. If you see it. <laughs> Seriously, I need a handler in my own studio. I need a handler. All right, so these these are all these parts are created separately. So let me take it apart. So you've got the lid with the needle, right? Let me let me do this on something not black. <laughs> I've got the lid with the needle, okay? And then I have this piece that comes out. So it's almost like a needle guard, okay? That comes out, and then this little valve uh, tip with the needle bit comes out, and then you have the base portion. So these are the four pieces. So this is why I always say don't bother cleaning it. If you just maintain your tips, either the pink or the black, um, by keeping the putting the lid back on when you're done, threading the needles. If you haven't threaded the needles, and you put the lid back on, and it is possible to put the lid back on without threading the needle, um, you'll get dried paint in the tip. Okay, um, so sometimes when you are playing around with your tip, you will go to unscrew your lid. I'm just putting it back together here. You'll go to unscrew your lid, and instead of just the lid pop popping off the tip, you actually accidentally unscrew the lid and the needle guard off. And, and then you don't really notice because it works fine. You're gonna, you know, you'll use it like that. The, when you'll notice is when you go to put the lid back on. So notice here, because I've screwed off that piece number two with the lid, still attached to the lid, well, now I can't see the needle in the, in the lid. What, what I mean by threading the needle is the needle on the lid must insert and, and fit inside the needle on the tube, okay? So this needle is gonna thread inside that needle. You're gonna insert the, the lid needle into the tube needle, okay? When you put the lid back on, that has to insert. That keeps it from drying out. Um, and also a lot of people, like the fine line applicator bottles that you can get, they have the tips on, they come in different tip sizes. And a lot of people like to put glue in those because then if you're, if you're using really, you know, if you're gluing really small things, it's really helpful to have glue come out of a really small point. Sharon, where do you live? Our, our spotlight store is, um, our spotlight store is Scrap Addicts in uh, Edmonton, Canada. So right now there are a spotlight. Ivy's posting links. Uh, she's got these tips in and she'll ship reasonably outside of Canada and free under, free over $50 in Canada. USA, um, stores that carry my stuff have this. Yeah, you have matte medium in one of those little bottles. Yeah, it's really nice sometimes to have a precise glue application. I think the pink tip one, yeah, I don't know about, yeah. I, I, answering questions about who has what is just not something I can, uh, <laughs> I can really answer because everybody orders something different and sells out at different times. So um, best to search and follow the stores that you are willing to buy from and willing to that are willing to ship to you and most of them are willing to ship I don't, I don't know who has what so I have no idea all right so I would always tell people when you take the lid off make sure that you can still see the needle in the lid um, and if you don't see the needle in the lid that means you've taken that part number two off with the lid as well and you just need to unscrew that put it back on the base and now I see both needles, and now I can put the small needle inside the big needle and close my tip. Now, um, Wendy Becky told, I, I was telling her once, oh yeah, you gotta be careful because that base comes off. And she goes, oh, well I use these. I think, I can't remember what she put them on. I think these might fit on a Stickles bottle. Um, she goes, I use those, I use your tips, but I put a little dot of um, glossy accents <laughs> 
on the base and then screw this uh, needle guard on and then it never comes off. And I thought, duh, <laughs> never occurred to me to uh, actually maybe glue this bottom piece on. <laughs> That's why Wendy it was a cardiac care nurse and I am not. All right, so it's a little easier to see when it comes to your bottles, uh, the bottle, the, the, the pink ones, because because they're different colors, the needle guard is not the same color as the lid. It's very obvious if you accidentally take the pink off. Okay, so it's just really impossible to put the lid back on properly if this pink part is still attached. So I said to Patty, well, that's great. I, you know, Wendy says to glue it and Patty said, oh, but if you don't glue it, here's what you can do. <laughs> she said that if you have black tips and let's say you don't use the paint tubes anymore, okay, um, but you still have some and, you know, they're, they're, they're still... They're still awesome tips. Um, she says you can actually switch the tip size. And I was like, what? So if you take if you take it apart, these two needles are interchangeable. Meaning this one's finer, this one's a little thicker because the original tube needle was quite a bit thicker. You can pop this off and you can pop the one from the black tube into the pink tube. Screw that one in. Screw that back on, and then you can actually use, let's see if you can use the black lid, yep. Then you can use the black lid, because the, the needle inside the black lid fits the needle inside the, you know, the, the black tube. Um, this, this one has a skinny needle, the white, the black one will have the fatter needle. And so then you can actually use the fatter tip when if you want a fatter bead, and, it, it, and it's helpful if you're having a hard time squeezing the medium through the finer tip, and then, so they're interchangeable. And I seriously was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Because um, a lot of us do have the fat tips still, and the paint tubes are discontinued, and so as they run out of stock, they will, they will they're not re refilling tubes. And so it kind of gives new life to those black ones. You can, you could always, you could always keep keep the black tip on a tube so that it doesn't dry out, um, or put it in a Ziploc or something like that. Or if you wanted to rinse it and maybe stick pins in there and clean it out, you could too. But just know that you can, you can sw swap those out, which I thought was really cool, and I did not realize that before. Okay, I now have paint on that. Oh, see, what am I doing? I can't get that back on. Dur, dur, dur. Just play with it, and then you, that way you'll feel how um, how they go back together, and then it won't you you know won't be it'll kind of de uh, it'll kind of demystify it, right? So I put the regular I put the one that it comes with the the, the finer needle back on the pink tool, and. I'll get in little kicks where everything that I've done recently, I'll come back to and I'll start adding little dimensional bits to it because it, it just it just pops and makes me happy. It's just a really cool accent. Now, let's say now that you, your penny is almost gone and you, or, or you just want to change the color. You want it, you know, you only have a couple of the tips, but you've got all the paint and you think, oh, I wish I had this on marine. Here's the great thing is changing the, these. You don't have to wash it. It's just like when you change color in your pastry bag of frosting. At first you squeeze out the first color, and then you squeeze out a mix of the two colors, and then eventually the new color will squeeze out exclusively. And that's exactly what will happen if I put this lid right onto a different color. So I'm going to take this off. If you want to save one of those little duty dad things and, and pop it in there. You can, but this is what I do. Shocker. I usually just switch the lids. <laughs> so now I've got a lid on that paint. I've got to pop the, pop this out, right? And then I'm going to put the fine line tip on the new bottle. And then you want to get a piece of scratch paper, or maybe this can be on a project or I don't know. You'll see. But now you want to extrude 
all of the penny that's in there, it's gonna be penny at first, and then it's gonna be penny and marine, and then it will be only marine. Let's see. All right. So I'm going to just squeeze and see now it's penny because that 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 penny paint is still um, in the needle. I'm starting to see a bit of marine happening. So now marine is coming out, and it already all the penny looks like it's almost already gone. It doesn't take long for your new color. I don't have any paint stuck down in there. It doesn't take long for your new color to come out exclusively, which is really nice. Oh, I'm having a hard time screwing that one, squeezing that one for some reason. Um, another thing is the, um, the metallics tend to be a little easier to extrude, and I'm not really sure why. I think I might have talked so long did I talk so long that with the lid off and not using it that I actually managed to have some paint dry in there la, 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 la. oh much better so now it's only marine oh that one's killing me today let's put it on an elephant <laughs> Was I not just using this? What is happening? Oh, it's because I took the list. I took that off, right? And because I took it off, it's not wanting to uh, to go for me. La 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 la. la. Unclog, unclog. La, 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 la. All right, well, I try while well, I, well, I do some surgery on this. How are we doing? Questions, concerns. I'm just gonna switch back to the other tip because I obviously let that let that one dry, and I need to let it soak. Oh my goodness. That was a lot. So Penny, and now Elephant is coming out. Ooh, that's pretty. You get a ombre effect. And now it's Elephant. So see how it just switches? Isn't that cool? I'm gonna throw this one in my paint water. La, 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 la. Huh. So weird. This time I've had one totally clog while I had it taken apart. Okie doke. All right, let's let's do gel print. What do you soak in? I just soak it in my paint water. A little Morphe's oil soap, maybe. Okay, now you guys checking out Scrap Addicts social media. Check out Scrap Addicts Facebook, Instagram, website. Just check them out. Awesome shop. Awesome shop. All right, so I am just applying some paint to my plate, Oop. an old glue brush that I had. And then I do, remember I said the tip is, is to, for me, is to actually touch the tip to your substrate. That applies for me also to the plate. And no, I've never damaged a plate. I'm not stabbing the plate with the tip. I'm actually just gently squeezing and dragging it like this across. Uh, the plate and so I, I really am not going to um, have a problem with poking the plate 
lot of people think that you're gonna hurt that plate. Well, you probably are if you just manage to really stab hard or press really, really hard. I'm not gonna press hard. Uh, and I've learned too that the more paint that I put down through the fine line tip, it, it, it's, there's a lot of paint on the plate, which means the first print that I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna press very lightly. Cool. And then your secondary and tertiary pulls will be even better. So, you know, if you if you're if you're using your piece properly, you're really not going to hurt your plate. If you're using your tip properly, I mean. So that means don't don't put it down, stab it down, hold it at an angle, and gently draw right. Keeping in mind that it's putting out almost too much paint for a print. I mean, really, it's putting out a big bead, right? A big blob. And you want to print gently, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Print gently the first couple prints because that paint's very thick. And really, a, a gel plate works best with a thin, thin layer of paint. Now this is gonna be my wormhole all day. What do you do to rescue, what do you use to rescue hard brushes? Murphy's oil soap, soak them overnight. Isn't that cool? The reason why it's blobby is because so much paint's coming out of the, you know, the bead is thick. It's a little easier um, if I if I could have wouldn't have clogged up my other one. I've never clogged one like that before. Ay ay ay. So typical. Um, let's see. Let's move this back to metallic. Ooh, marine and penny. It's kind of pretty. Metallic is amazing. Sometimes you're like, oh, for printing, I've got to get out my brayer. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. No, you don't. You just got to play. Experiment. See what happens. So I'm squeezing gently. My tip is touching the plate, but it's dragging across in a gentle way. I'm not applying, I'm not apply, I'm probably applying, I'm applying pressure to the, the paint bottle, but I'm not applying really pressure to the paint. I'm just touching it and letting it, letting it roll. Um, in, in Florida, you are gonna wanna contact Everything Scrapbook and Stamps, Michelle McCosh. Grab Addicts is our store today. Hi, Spotlight store, wonderful shop in Edmonton. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Sometimes this is, after, let's say you have an ugly print. Sometimes doing something like this, um, just drawing on the plate, it will save an ugly print too. Let's see if I can find an ugly print. I've got so many. <laughs> so many, I've been chopping them up, so that's, that's pretty hideous. That is really dense with crazy gloss spray. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my tip to a dark color. Let's see. It's too medieval. Is he 
gunmetal gray. Squeeze. Uh, that happens to be cardstock, but you can use anything you want for the pulls. I really like to use um, a, 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 the smoothest paper that I can find for gel printing. I think it prints a little bit better. I guess I'm in a circle mood today, you guys. You don't have to just draw circles. Remember, you're not stabbing the plate. You're just gently dragging that tip across. Cool. There's so much paint there. <laughs> I actually put on a little too much, I think. Oh, but I love it. So then you chop that up. And then that is a great textural piece to layer with. Isn't that pretty? Let's draw a face on there. Let me just clean my plate off by wiping it on my apron. <laughs> Mm, metallic paint smells so good so because you're not going to have a lot of control over this and you know think abstract here don't think really pretty you're just doing sort of craziness right These are gonna be squished, mushy. You can see anywhere you've left a really big blob is where you're gonna get a squish. It's a technical art term, a squish. Cool. Put my lid back on so I don't toast this one by blabbing on incessantly. Let's see how it turns out. Ooh, cool. those are so fun they're like little ghosts they're a little serial killer but in a good way all right questions concerns talk to me darlings talk to me do you have the big brushes ivy big brushes in stock. So I just placed a couple, well, a week or so ago, I placed my ranger order and I thought, I'm gonna order tags. <laughs> yeah. Alan messaged me and he's like, yeah, there's no tags. You know that, right? I'm like, yeah, I know. I just thought I'd try. <laughs> I thought I would try. Um, I don't clean my gel plate, Joyce. Other people will rinse them or baby wipe them. If you really want to get everything off, if you, co if you coat it with paint, put it face down on a piece of paper or in your journal, let it dry overnight, come back and peel your gel plate off, it will actually clean everything off. You just have to let it dry overnight. Um, but I, you know, I, I purpose, I think a, a dirty gel plate is the best because as you start a new gel plate session, and I talk about this in the class or in the, the free, I did a free video. We did a little bit of printing um, that I, I really prefer a dirty plate. I really do. I think it's so much better. And also keep in mind that I don't love, um, I really don't love cleaning things. My background paint dried too quick. Hey, I'm having drying issues today. Can you tell? Even that dried. Good old Arizona in the summer. So here's why I don't like to clean it. So I wouldn't clean that off because that might come off in the next incarnation. 
So I'm gonna load it with a little bit thicker paint. Let it sit there for just one second. Got a lot of paint over here to use up. Let it sit just one second, and we'll see if that comes up. It might, it might not. And if it doesn't, then it's cool. We keep going. Let us see. Just play and see. Yeah, clean offs are the best. And using your stencils, the white on white. You mean my tissue? Use it, Joyce? The white on white? The white on white stencils? Ooh, it came up, but, but just barely in the background. But it also brought up all kinds of other gunk that was in that background. So here's what I would do next. I totally would change the color. <laughs> oh. Let's put night. So if you are gonna be using this a lot, you see how changing colors is a little bit of a pain. Um, it is nice to have a few more tips to play with. All right, so I got that. Just the shadow happening there. Oh, let me squeeze it through. Definitely an imprecise method, this gel plating with, or you know, drawing on the gel plate with these. It's not, you're not gonna get precision. It's not gonna lend itself to accuracy. I'm fighting today against the Arizona dry time. Funky little face there. <laughs> cool. She's blobby and delicious. You don't have to do faces, of course. Oh, I like that one even better. Yep, you can use your rubber stamps on your plates, absolutely. People always say, can I use this on the plate? And what I wanna to say to you is, try it. I don't know, probably. The answer is yes, right? When you're working with me, the answer is, oh yes. If there's ever something that you really can't use together, I think all of the designers will mention it, but almost everything's interchangeable or even, even some of the stuff that supposedly you can't use together. Like in general, acrylic paint doesn't work at all on beeswax. Well, if you take my beeswax class, guess what we put on top of our print, or on top of our pieces? <laughs> A little bit of paint. So just because the answer is no, doesn't mean you can't push the boundaries a little bit. Plain tissue. Is that not delicious? That is just delicious. The yellow was already on the tissue. It must have left it on my desk at some point. So these little tips, these fine applicator tips are just great for details and art marks. You don't have to use them on the gel plates. Just wanted to show you that it's really easy to get some fun effects on the plates with them. Great way to just mess around and see what happens. And crazy outlining of things. There is a learning curve though, like I said. And I think the main key though is even pressure. Even pressure and touch the tip of the, the needle to your substrate. Can you hear it dragging? Do you hear that? It's because I'm, I'm, I'm dragging that paint tip across the paper as I go. Never holding it up and just making a worm.
right? Okay. Questions, concerns? Talk to me, darlings. I can't live without my gel plates. I use them all the time. That one that I was just using stays in my drawer. I don't even I don't even care for it properly. Throw it back in the drawer. And that's what happens. It's just the bomb. I think this is my favorite thing I did all day. You get the fine liners from any store that sells my stuff. So our spotlight store today is the Scrap is Scrap Addicts in Edmonton, Canada. You can contact any of the stores. A lot of the stores have them. Um, I don't know about bigger paint bottles. Um, I don't know. I wish. This is my favorite thing I did all day. And what's funny is it's on a piece of paper that's bent. Because <laughs> oh, I probably had this paper on the floor and rolled over it with my office chair at one point. Because remember, everything gets thrown on the floor. Will the gesso only be in the small bottles and the pots? Um, for now, you know, R Alan from Ranger said, look, he used to sell gesso in bigger containers back when Claudine was around and, and the sales were terrible. It always comes down to sales, you guys. Um, and, and because in order for a company to stay alive, they need to sell their products. And so if one of us designers has this awesome idea that we think is going to go, then we, uh, you know, we'll put it out there. And Ranger is usually pretty game to try things. And then, you know, you have to look at the, you have to look at the sales in the end to decide if it's, if it's, it's you know, if it's worth the space in the warehouse, if it's worth, worth the effort on the line and everything that it takes to bring a product to market. There's a lot to it. Um, I'm super adjusted to the bottles though. You know, I cut them open when I get to the end. You know, I so say if you want extra, buy two at a time for now. And just need sales to be awesome. And then, <laughs> then maybe I can do more. Um, the gel plates are in my line. They're, it's a, it's a Dina Di Dilusions line. A Dina and Diane line, actually. And there are, there's two, there's a really large plate you can get. And then there is this set that has a round one that looks like I'm missing because I use that one a lot. I don't know where it is. I used it recently. Um, a round one. This is the one that I use today. And then this is, this fits like a number 12 tag. It's like six by, it, this is huge, this one. Um, so th there's a set of three around this tag size and then this large, large size. And then there's one, there's a giant one that's like the, the whole thing in one big, uh, one big thing. And you can, you, uh, you can get these tins to store them in. And then somebody in class was telling me they, they use these tins also to store their um, Dina Wakely tissue. I'm like, that is such a good idea. Such a good idea. All right, keep asking questions. Um, I go live every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And the schedule's always posted. I, I need to do the upcoming schedule but because this is the last date on the schedule. So um, I will... Uh, Always post the schedule, so you just kind of have to maybe set your set your timer, and I will remind you. Isemic writing is never random for me. It's always words. I never just write randomly. Um, I talk about that in my Isemic um, tip video. There is a video, a free video that I did about the Isemic. I know, um, I know, Scrap Addicts has these tips in. Yeah, stencils in the tins. Abstract class, I haven't worked on it yet, Barbara, um, since we last talked because of the scuba exam. With, I knew the scuba exam was coming up because of the virus. We had kind of, we weren't sure what was happening. And then when it got, ske got scheduled, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get my rear into gear about this. Um, I got to get my rear into gear, in the gear with uh, about this scuba exam because it's kind of a big deal. I mean, it's not a, it's not a simple thing. <laughs> um, this is a mask. Or actually, this is the stencil. Remember when I glue, I cut my stencil stencil apart and I embedded it into a magazine lid or a magazine front. Oh, I don't know where it is right now, but that that's a stencil. So I was making prints off of it. 
Let's just print off of the stencils. It's a stencil and a mask. So you can do it both ways. The mask, I know I can find. The stencil, I cut up, and this is the mask. Then the stencil part, I don't know where that went. But this was, I was actually pulling prints off the stencil itself to make these lines. But I, I was on a roll that day. I did like dozens of them. Some, you know, I get in a roll, I do it again and again and again and again and again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. So somewhere floating around, I do have the magazine page that I embedded the stencil in. Whew. I don't know where that, when I say I embedded the stencil, let me, let me explain. So if you have a stencil like this, and I know I'm not really going to use it in foursome, I really only want to use <laughs> one at a time, cut it apart. This is going to freak some of you out. Never fear. All right, so now I cut that stencil apart, and then I found myself a piece of paper. Um, I had used the cover of a magazine. So I have this magazine here called Mantra Wellness. I'm going to take the cover. And then I'm going to just give myself a visual for how big I need to cut the hole. This is just going to give this stencil shape a wide border. So if, if you're if you're an oversprayer um, and you don't want the corners of stencils showing up, this is one of the ways that you can get around that. Um, I I I don't care about corners. Shocker. People will often say in class, oh, but the corner showed up. And I'm like, oh, did it? I didn't notice. I was too busy looking at how cool it looks. <laughs> so then that's going to go here, right in the center. And then I'm going to take that with either washi or whatever tape you want. Masking tape. And you don't even have to use a good washi um, for this because, you know, save that for a project where it matters but you can just use masking tape to tape this in. So I did this with that exact, with this. I did that with this stencil and I just don't know where it is right now. You think that I would be using this time to clean and organize my studio, but no, I'm not. So now I have this embedded in and I won't get any weird edge happening around, my, around that shape. So that's what I did with with that. Just don't know. Just don't know where. I did it with a couple of them actually. A couple of the shapes from that stencil set. So I'm not quite sure where they are. But they're on here somewhere. And then this would I would just throw this in my stencil drawer. In in theory, you would think <laughs> you would think that, that would be where this other stencil would be. But you know I'm not, cons if I, you know, I'm not consistent with uh, taking care of my stuff very well. All right, last questions. Last questions. So is using a brush on the plate instead of a brayer a preference? It's just what was nearby and close. Um, just whatever. Um, the role of gesso is a primer. It seals your paper and lets your paint move. Gel medium is a glue. What kind of paint should you use in a fine line applicator? So if you're using my tips, you're gonna use my paint, you're gonna screw it right on. If you're buying the empty bottles, you can put anything in there. So this says the cost of not following your heart is spending the rest of your life wishing you had so this was that magazine that I tore the, the cover off, Montra Wellness. So I got it at Sprouts, and then I actually subscribed. It's a little bit woo-woo for me. I'm not very woo-woo, but, um, uh, but it has really, really good quotes. And you can follow Montra Wellness on Instagram, and they post these quotes all the time. And I recommend, I recommend following them on Instagram for sure. And it's just, it's just a delight to look at. I really enjoy the art in the magazine. So this is Mantra Wellness Magazine. One of the many that I tend to collect and hoard and use for inspiration.
Which one of your classes do you recommend starting with? You know, honestly, my beginning um, art journaling classes are very old. I wrote them in 2007 and 2008. So, I mean, they still have valuable content, but I, I you'll get more out of the all the free videos that I've been posting. And I have like 40 at least that I've done. So all you need to do is go to either my blog, my YouTube channel, or the Art of Dina Wakely Facebook page that you're on right now, click on videos, and then you can go back and watch all of those. And you'll get a lot of my tips um, and tricks and my philosophy just by watching the free videos for sure. I use my gesso so quickly that she says she likes her gesso in the tube. Yeah, anything in the tube. The reason we did tubes at the beginning is is drying. I, you know, we didn't want paint to dry out too quickly. It's another advantage actually to having smaller containers of paint. You know, the price point isn't more expensive, smaller. The price point's the same. And you're better off having two small bottles sometimes than one big one because you, your paint has less of a chance to dry out before you've actually used the quantity up. So, yeah. At first I was really resistant to the to the switch over. I kind of just felt like, well, artists use tubes, uh, or tubes, but um, I've really come to love the little bottles. They're so much easier to travel with. You can see through them. Um, don't forget, Scrap Addicts is our spotlight store. Um, I know Victoria Scrap Addicts sells them. You could uh, you could have them give you a quote for how much shipping. Re she says reasonable shipping to the U.S. So she said she had them in stock. She posted the link a couple of different times as well. And this is what I do when my paint gets down to when you can't get any more out. I open it up and there's still quite a bit of paint in there. So I cut the bottles open and I just keep I keep playing, keep using them. So dig out your fine line tips if you've got them. I know a lot of you do have them. And play, 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 because they're so fun to play with. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I'm, I, I'm now going to head to the scuba shop, get in the pool, and try not... Well, now I'm not... Now I can't see. I can't see because I don't have my prescription mask anymore. Oh, um, the next paid class. I'm not sure yet. I That's on my list to figure out. My husband just asked me about that last night. He's like, do you have that information for me so I can get that listed? I'm like, uh, no, I do not. No, my, uh, no, yeah. So, yeah. Bummer. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for supporting stores. And we will see you next Tuesday. So next free demo on Tuesday, next week, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the demos. And I will get that next $15 class advertised soon and hopefully get some time to uh, work on the, um, the abstract class. All right, bye everybody.